the pharmacist is right there at that counter. If you have questions for them, whether it's for your prescription or whether it's for something over the counter, they're there to answer your questions for you. Welcome to Talking About Kids. I am your host, R. Bradley Snyder, researcher, activist, and author of The Five Simple Truths of Raising Kids. My guest today is Stephanie Young Moss. Dr. Stephanie, as she is known, approached me with a unique thesis. Pharmacists can help reduce healthcare disparities among families. Her education and her decades of experience as a pharmacist and an activist convinced me, and I am eager for you to hear her insights as well as the advice that she has and that every pharmacist has for parents. This podcast was sponsored in part by the Arizona Department of Health Services Must Stop Bullying campaign through its Title V Maternal and Child Health Program. For more information, go to muststopbullying.org. And now, the interview. I was raised, born and raised um, in Alabama. And then I moved to Tennessee. So I was born and raised in the South, rather. And during that time, I was actually born in a public hospital. And I took advantage of free clinics. I had my immunizations there. I had all my checks there. So from there, I think being in healthcare and seeing what I was given, what was given to me as a child and the things I was able to, um, you know, have as a child and participate in as a child, as far as the free care that I did receive, that kind of took me on into my journey into healthcare. Mm -hmm. So once I got to school, I got into pharmacy. I did a lot of different things while I worked in different, um, um, different areas of pharmacy. I worked in, of course, in retail, I worked in industry, managed care. But during all that time, I was always giving back to my community. So I would do things as far as uh, whether it was volunteering or working with uh, vulnerable populations. I got on boards that had the same interests. So whether it was being on a board that uh, addressed food insecurities, healthcare disparities. So those are the ways that I learned more about healthcare disparities was by working on those boards mm -hmm. and working with those people and working in those communities. Because you learn about it in school, of course, but not to the depth where you really need to know and understand it. So me working and volunteering in those organizations really, really helped me um, learn more about healthcare disparities or health disparities rather. And um, that really just um, um, really took me at my passion along mm -hmm. that way as far as working in, a, I'm currently on board of a hospital and they do a lot with health disparities. Not say hospital, but it's a federally uh, qualified healthcare center where they do a lot with addressing those needs and make sure that they address the needs of the people in, their, in that community and they meet them where they are. You know, and you've made the observation that pharmacists kind of have a unique perspective on the healthcare needs of families. Can you talk about that a little bit? Why is a pharmacist, you know, what are they seeing that maybe, you know, doctors or nurses aren't seeing? Well, I think that first of all, the pharmacist can get more time with a, uh, actually with a, a patient or with, uh, or with someone in the pharmacy. So for instance, if you, if you come to a pharmacy, they're considered the most accessible healthcare professional. Hmm. Yes, you have time with your doctor. Yes, you have time with your nurse. But sometimes, you know, it could be rushed. It just depends on your he different health, your health care provider. But the pharmacist is right there at that counter. If you have questions for them, whether it's for your prescription or whether it's for something over the counter, they're there to answer your questions for you. And yes, of course, they can be busy and they get busy, of <laughs> right. course, but they are accessible and they're there to answer your questions. So I think that's where uh, the pharmacist can really play a big role in addressing either health disparities or addressing health with, um, with uh, I say patients, but you know that's really not the word I want to use. But the right. consumer or pa uh, patients is probably is the best word to use. But addressing with the patients because they see them and they're there, right there with them um, after they leave the doctor's office. So I think it's important for moms or patients to know that your pharmacist is there to answer questions. Um, when your doctor um, provides you a prescription, if they do, 
-hmm. Your pharmacist knows that drug. They know they have your history and they have, you know, other drugs that you could possibly be on in that system. So it's important to engage with them and talk with them and ask some questions as well. I guess I'm partially surprised to hear you say that because it, from my own perspective, I'm, I'm never quite sure how much I can ask a pharmacist. Like I, I don't know enough about mm -hmm. their training to know, you know, right. what are the limitations? So mm -hmm. give me a little bit of a better understanding of that training. Are you prepared to answer the, you know, these kind of broader questions that people sometimes bring to you? Yeah. So I think pharmacists are experts in medication. But okay. when you learn that medication, you also have to know some history of some of the conditions too. Now, don't get me wrong. We don't know every single condition. We don't, right. Just like, for instance, your physicians or your nurses, they don't know every single condition either. But they do have enough training that if there's something that they don't know, they have the resources there that they can look it up. Mm. But the biggest thing is that they are an expert in that medication. So if you have questions about a medication that you're on or even why you're taking it, and yes, your doctor could be giving it to you for you know, different reasons, but they do have that training and they are professional enough that they can talk to you on that level as far as what your medication is. So if you have a question about your medication and you see a pharmacist is busy, they are required by law to be, you know, to be honest, to be able to answer your questions okay. about that medication. You know, you can say, um, they will say, do you have any questions for the pharmacist? A lot of people will say, you know, no, I don't have any. But if you truly do have a question about your medication, you can request to speak to a pharmacist today at that time. And when they have time, they will come over and uh, counsel you on that medication as well. So um, they are experts in medication and they do have the resources to be able to find um, uh, the information that they need as well, if there's something that they're not particularly an expert in. You know, I mentioned that I'm sometimes apprehensive about bringing issues to my pharmacist, mm -hmm. but I've stood in line at my pharmacist mm -hmm. and I've, I, I, I'm trying not to eavesdrop. I'm absolutely not, <laughs> but I have heard some other, some of the other kind of questions that people ask of the pharmacist. Um, have, what are, what are some of the more like outlandish healthcare questions that you've been asked? Um, I think, I think some of the biggest thing is that a lot of people um, sometimes may not respect pharmacists, hmm. right? Because they think that my physician knows what I'm taking. My physician gave me this. What do you mean I can't have it? Or oh. what, um, uh, like for instance, certain drugs can be used for certain things. And certain, some drugs are used, uh, your physician may give it to you for a different reason, right? right? Or there may be something that comes up in the system that, hey, you're on this drug, you can't take this drug with it, I'm gonna call your physician. Uh, so a lot of times I feel as though pharmacists may not get um, the respect that they deserve mm -hmm. in that area. So we may call, they may, they could be a possibly, could be a, a particular, um, a, could be a dosage that could be incorrect. Um, a pharmacist can call and talk to your doctor about that and they're able to get that change with them, with them. So it's a team. They need to think of the pharmacist as part of that healthcare team. Even if you are taking your, your medication out to a different uh, location mm -hmm. or, you know, like for instance, to a community, a pharmacist, a pharmacy that's in the community, they're still a part of the healthcare team and they need to realize, think of your pharmacist as part of that healthcare team. So I think some of the most outlandish things is that sometimes people may not respect the pharmacist as much because they feel as though you're just filling my order, you're just filling my right. medication, my doctor gave it to me, they know what's best for me. But the pharmacist is there, they're the medication expert and they are working as a team with your with your healthcare provider. You know, I, I guess part and parcel to that is the fact that pharmacists may seem more accessible you know, I, mm -hmm. I, I know yep. it took me a really long time to to advocate for myself with doctors. They, I always kind of put them mm -hmm. on this weird pedestal. It took me, you know, I was, I think I was in mm -hmm. my 40s before I started realizing, you know, these are just people. <laughs> they have a different degree than me, um, but I don't need mm -hmm. to just take everything that they say, um, you know, at, mm -hmm. at, w without advocating. So do you think, though, that that people find pharmacists more accessible? And does that give you, you know, I know that it, it opens you up, obviously, for kind of criticism, as you just mentioned. But does it also maybe make you more available for some questions that people don't even ask their doctors? 
Uh, yeah, sometimes there are. And, and you know, all the times, of course, as pharmacists, you can't answer that. But um, I think that's when it's important for either uh, a pharmacist can reach out to your doctor if you have a specific question that, that, they, think that they possibly could think that, hey, um, uh, that there could be a conflict or something with your medication. But, you know, I keep saying that pharmacists are the most accessible and they have been voted the most accessible, accessible mm -hmm. healthcare professional. And pharmacists are extremely busy too. We know that they are busy, but they are, their obligation and their job as a pharmacist is to make sure to help you with any questions that you may have and help in the areas that you may need help in. So um, it can be intimidating sometimes if a, if a health care, not a health care provider, but if a patient comes in and says, hey, you know what? My doctor gave me this. Can you answer this question? And as a pharmacist, you sit down, you look up the information, you try to answer as best you can. And if it's particular to that patient's healthcare history, they can and call and talk to the doctor as a team and work that out with them as oh, well. Wow. Wow. That's interesting. You know, you had mentioned that there were three things that pharmacists wish every mother knew. Mm -hmm. Can you describe those three things for my audience? Um, I think as being a mom myself, um, and I've been guilty of this, even as being a healthcare professional, I've been guilty this, at this too. I think that as a mom, we need to know that, or as a parent in general, you need to know that you don't always need an a antibiotic mm. and you won't always leave the doctor's office with the prescription, right? I think when we go to the, to the, you know, to our, to our healthcare provider, we're like, if I did not leave with the prescription, it was a waste of my time. And I've been guilty of that telling my kids, you sick, you sure? I think this is what it is. I think this is what you should do. If I take you to this doctor and it's nothing else, but you know, you always want to be careful to make sure you're always thinking it could be something else, right? right? What if it's not just, so we have to realize you're not always going to have a prescription when you leave. Everything does not need an antibiotic. Mm -hmm. So I think as a, and I have, like I said, I'm preaching to, I'm preaching to myself as well because I'm the same way, but I think that's very important. You know, I was going to, everything doesn't have, you know, I always going to have a prescription. And then also, I think it's also important to, to stay up to date on your healthcare provider visits and your vaccination, right? So as, as for your kids and also as adults, it's very important to do both of those things. Um, I think a lot of times time can slip by us. And I'm going to be honest, one of my kids, she's terrified. She does not like uh, to have um, uh, shot her shots. So as my as a mom, I have to make sure that I'm, even if she's resistant, I still have to take her in to make sure that and explaining to her why it's important and then explaining to her that it's going to be you know done in the blink of an eye. So let's go to this doctor. Let's get it over with. This is why you need it. It's important. And then move on you know, with that. So I think those are probably... Uh, the three best things is that you want to always you get a, um, everything that's not about antibiotic. You want to have, always have a prescription when you leave the doctor's office and to make sure that you stay up to date on your wellness visits and your vaccination as well. Oh, interesting. You know, you've been thinking, obviously, from your position uh, a lot about these healthcare disparities, you know, both in, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, as you're in your professional role, but as you mentioned in your public service and the boards that you've served on. Do, do you have any ideas for correcting these healthcare disparities? Um, well, I think um, for healthcare disparities, there are so many different things that can affect it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you think, talk about um, social determinants of health. Yeah. And social determinants of health are things, of places that we work, you know, where we live, you know, where we, where we go to church, our education, all of those things kind of can determine health disparities. And I think it's important for us as uh, parents to um, realize that every child doesn't have a playground. Every child doesn't have sidewalks in their neighborhood, right? right. So as healthcare professionals, we may tell a child, make sure, you know, you go out and you get more exercise. Well, they don't have playgrounds around them. Mm. And some people may be afraid to go out and play in their neighborhood. Everyone's different. Everyone's background is different. So we have to really consider that when we're thinking about um, what we're, first of all, as a professional, what we're telling kids. And then also as a parent, 
when we're looking at other kids as well. Um, and then also with social determinants of health, I think the biggest thing for kids to me is not only where they work, where they live, but also education. Education is one of the most modifiable social determinants of health because if someone has a great access to education, they are able to, let's say, for instance, they are able to get a job that's a good paying job. They're able to have a job that has benefits where they can have quality health care. And all of those things can really play into uh, being an adult. So really focusing on the education of your child, I think it's important as well. Um, and then also, um, of course, um, taking care of your health early mm -hmm. as a child, making sure they know the health early as a child, whether they're going to the doctor, like I said, vaccines as well, uh, looking at those types of things. And then also poverty plays a big role as well um, in your um as far as health care, health disparities, like he keeps saying health care disparities, but of course, health disparities uh, is what we're really talking right. about, because health care disparities, they're like your access to health care, which plays into it as well. But the health disparities, um, uh, just making sure that as far as poverty um, as well, if people are uh, living in um, living in poverty, a lot of times they may um, not have as great access to health care. They may not go to the uh, physician as much. And then it's also shown in research that they have more time missed in school as well. They have more sick days missed in school as well uh, if they have a certain uh, level of poverty. Poverty. Right. So it's important to for us um, as parents to try and um, make sure as far as the education portion is being reached making sure that we're keeping up on the wellness and, and, and wellness checks for our kids. And then also the exercise, because I know, you know, kids can be on their phones, they can be on their tablets. And like I said, I'm talking to myself as well, <laughs> but making sure that, we, that, we're, that they're getting that activity that they need as far as helping them stay, ha have a healthy life and being able to keep up with their um, health as stay, keeping that young, instilling that in them, when they're young, you know, as a child as well, right? And eating healthy right. too, eating healthy. You know, that's important. And I know we have, of course, we have things that we, um, I'm not saying that you have to avoid everything, but setting that mind frame of what you should eat or what's a healthy, balanced meal. It's okay to have a splurge every now and then, but making sure that you're eating uh, well it's for your health as well. It's so interesting because you're, you're talking on this prevention side, right? If, if people did all these things that you're prescribing, Stephanie, a pharmacist would be out of work, <laughs> wouldn't they? <laughs> well, I mean, you know what? I think the, the goal of a pharmacist is not to fill a, a bunch of medication. I'm, I'm not speaking as a pharmacist. I'm not speaking as a someone who, um, um, who owns, you know, a pharmacy. Yeah. I'm not saying that, but even as a pharmacy owner, their ultimate goal is to help and take care of um, take care of uh, patients, right? So whether they are whether you are telling them to change their lifestyle, I think that's number one for everyone is to change your lifestyle and to change the way that you're uh, eating, change the way that you're moving, those types of things. That's number one, and then comes. Um, uh, prescriptions after that. So I think the goal is not, like I said, to not to have polypharmacy and as many drugs <laughs> that you can be on, but it's to make sure that you have an overall healthy person. And I know it may seem like it, but but to be honest, it's really not. The One of the other determinants of health that you, you had mentioned, some of the, the easier ones to correct, the other one is restorative practices like getting enough sleep, right? Taking care oh, yes. of yourself uh -huh. that way. That's, that's a big one. I know that yep. Listeners of this podcast have heard other people talk about the need for, for sleep and those restorative mm -hmm. practices where you keep your, your own sense of anxiety um, in balance, right? When, when you see, Stephanie, mm -hmm. when, when yeah. people come to you and they're picking up a, a, a prescription and you can tell from what they have been prescribed that these are people that didn't do, they didn't take the preventative steps. Um, they didn't look after themselves, and now they're in a real serious health crisis. That has to mm -hmm. impact you. You ha that has to like hurt you a little bit, given that you know all of your other concerns and involvements. Mm -hmm. How do you take care of yourself in those instances? Uh, you mean mentally? When yeah. I see when I see that, well, you know, to be honest, I am actually I, I consider myself very empathetic. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, as I've gotten older, I try to, I've learned ways to protect that. Like I would go home and literally think about uh, either customers or patients yeah. or even people that I see in the, you know, run across a uh, cross path with while traveling or in the street. I would actually take that on and think about it like all night. Yeah. Think about that person. I wonder, are they okay? But I've learned to, first of all, I, I meditate for myself, okay. um, which really helps me a lot. But then also, I think the work that I'm doing in the community also gives me some, um, I don't want to say, I, maybe relief, mm -hmm. I guess. Because even if I'm not, um, even, I, even if I wasn't able to catch a person early on, I'm trying to help others. Um, prior to getting, you know, that right. way, um, prior to getting to that, um, where it's so detrimental, where it's hard to think of, you know, where it always, almost seems like there's no hope, which there, there is, but just trying to make sure that I'm in the community doing things early on for others as well, um, I think really helps give me some relief for myself. So whether, like I said, meditating helps me and then also giving back in my community helps me as well, trying to, to prevent others and trying to help the community prevent, um, uh, right. to trying to take care of their health in other ways as well. Because it, it's not just that you and other pharmacists see the type of medications that people are on, but you also have discussions with them uh, about what they can afford and, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and the kind of choices yep. they have to make if they've been prescribed a couple mm -hmm. of medications but can only afford one of them or less of them. The, mm -hmm. in, yep. I've watched pharmacists be what I would consider like social workers, helping them figure mm -hmm. out their own yeah. finances and some really difficult decisions about how long can I go without this or what's my trade-off here. Right, and I think that's why it's important to think of your your pharmacist as a team. Mm. Hopefully, if you have a healthcare professional, that they are considering those things when they write your prescription. But I know sometimes that's all, not always possible because every healthcare professional does not know everyone's formula to a T, right. right? I understand that of what's on the formula. And that's when it's important for your pharmacist to be considered as part of that team because they may see something that costs, well, you know, they can't afford this. They can call your doctor and say, hey, what about this medication? Have you thought about okay. this? What if you tried this? So they can be a part of that team once that prescription, if they see that it comes across and something's not covered or something's higher, that's when your pharmacist is so important to be able to be a part of that team to make recommendations of, of alternatives or what you can do or what your, what your healthcare provider can do to help you or to prescribe something else or, you know, kind of what they can do to help you. And the other thing that I see pharmacists having to answer for is insurance companies. Like I, I've mm -hmm. seen customers treat pharmacists as if they somehow were a representative of their insurance company and you're not. <laughs> right. Well, and that's, that's true. So when something comes across, please, please be considerate to your pharmacist that they are just putting in the medications and they're submitting it and it's coming back whether it's, you know, approved or denied. Yeah. And sometimes that can be for your, you know, it could be the insurance company. And sometimes it can also be your employer too, mm -hmm. what they decide they want to cover or not. So people need to consider all of those factors when it comes into it. And I know it can be, you know, like I said, pharmacies are most accessible, are most accessible and they're right there, right? So of course you may be upset, but you got to think about what other factors are playing into it. So it's okay to be upset, but just don't take it out on them and realize, hey, this could have been because of a formulary choice. This could have been because my employer chose not to have that particular formulary, right? That particular drug on the formulary. Right. So they, you need to think about all of those factors that play into it. It's not your pharmacist denying you uh, the medication. Your pharmacist does not set the price. So consider all those things when you are picking up medication. Stephanie, I want to thank you so much for coming on to the podcast and talking with me. But I also want to thank you for kind of opening up my, my mind and, and hopefully those of my listeners about the role that pharmacists play in creating a kind of a more healthy community. So thank you so very mm -hmm. much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. No problem. Um, I want to touch back on uh, one of the things that we talked about as far as wellness checks and also 
uh, keeping up to date with their vaccination, of course. And I know we talked about kids. I know we have, but I want to make sure that moms are also aware that it's very important for them, mm. right? Our parents in general. Um, as parents, we're always taking care of everyone else. We're always making sure that everyone else has their uh, vaccination up to date, that they are taking their wellness visits and they're taking their wellness checks. But as a mom, we need to think of our own wellness checks and visits as our own self-care. Um, and making sure that we're taking care of ourselves as well. So why are you making appointments for everyone else? As moms, we need to make sure that we're doing the same. Um, and one of the main reasons being is because I know that a lot of our kids, you know, they have their hepatitis B vaccination. They're up to date. Um, anyone that was born uh, after 1991, it was a requirement for them to be able to get that vaccine. Um, but as moms, we are probably not up to date. Mm. So it's important for us to catch up with our kids um, to make sure that we have our hepatitis B vaccination as well. Um, and the, one of the main reasons is because the CDC has recommended that for adults between the ages of 19 and 59, that they get vaccinated against hepatitis B. And um, for those of your listeners, are you familiar with hepatitis B? Well, well please tell us. Okay, so hepatitis B, it is um, it's highly infectious virus, and in fact, it is 100 times more infectious than HIV. Mm. Um, there are currently about 2.5 million people in the U.S. Uh, with chronic hepatitis B, and if it's left unmanaged, it can cause things like liver failure or liver cancer, um, and there is no cure for the disease. So like I said, our kids are upset in their vaccinations, but as parents, we are probably more than likely not up to date. And if you've had a hepatitis B vaccine, you probably know it. But if you were born at, before 1991, nine times out of 10, you do not have wow. your hepatitis B vaccine. Yeah, so there are some options out there. And I think that uh, hepatitis B, B is one of the first and only hepatitis B vaccines. And it's delivered in two doses over one month period. So I know that we're busy as moms and I know that we're busy as parents and we have very busy schedules looking after everyone else, but that should really help with it being a convenient and easy uh, dose for us to be able to um, um, keep up with our vaccinations and keep up with our wellness checks because that is a part of our self-care as well. Thank you. That's good to know. You're welcome. Yeah. So if, 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 uh, if your listeners want to know more about it, they can go to the website, uh, help the catch up. Dot com and that is hep h e p uh, the letter b as in boy and catch up c a p c h up dot com and we'll add that link to the website as well so thank you so much you're welcome you're welcome that was Stephanie Young Moss for more information about Dr Stephanie please visit talkingaboutkids.com from there, you also can find out about upcoming episodes, suggest a topic, learn more about me and my books, or submit your questions for future guests. Our theme song is by The Senators. For more of their music, go to thesenatorsmusic.com. And remember, kids are young goats and young children. And the difference is that young goats are easier to manage.